Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel Ray and today we're gonna have a whip and chat and I'm starting a new project. <laughs> Thank you all so much for suggesting that I start Ajisai Margaret Morales by Diamond Art Club. So I'm gonna prep my canvas before we get started with the uh, actual whip and chat where I talk about my life but I just wanted to share with you how I prep and the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna washi tape the edges um, I think you'll be able to see it if I show you close up hopefully it is a very bright day to here today I don't think you're gonna be able to see this on poured glue and double-sided adhesive canvases, sometimes there's a little bit of a, an overlap where the glue goes outside of the grid lines. And on this kit in particular, this edge is a lot further over than it mm, probably should be. So, I'll show you with the plastic back. You can see the shininess of the glue extends beyond the grid line. So I'm gonna use washi tape in order to go over these edges and make sure that I don't get any lint or dog fur or sweater fluff <laughs> or anything on these edges. So I'm gonna time lapse that and we'll start our whip and chat. Hi everybody. All right, so this is a voiceover. <laughs> um, yeah, I had a lot of fun actually making this video, so I hope that you enjoy it. Uh, there are a few different angles, so stick with me. Uh, it's not my best, but I'm still trying to figure out my crafting area and how exactly to make it all work. So, Let's see if I can just mute this on my end so that you don't hear it double. Okay, perfect. So here I am starting a section on this perforated plastic cover. And oh my God, I love it so much. Um, I might be in the minority here, but it is so nice to have plastic that can rip and rip in a straight line. Um, it's also heavy duty. It's double sided, so it won't stick on the plas on the glue if you put it down the wrong way, like if you rip it completely off. But I've just used the cover minder that came with the kit to tack it down. And I'm going to use my single placer. This is a palm pen, and I purchased this from Enablers Outpost a while back. Um, it's got this beautiful chrysanthemum flower in it. And I believe that the blank itself came from flower girl blanks. It's, it's a really, really nice pen. Um, so yeah, I'm just super glad that I had an occasion to use it, decided to, to work with this and use it for the ABs, which you'll see later on in the video, of course. But, um, it's very comfortable to use. I like it a lot. And I'm using my Firefly Diamond Art Tray. Um, I'll make sure that I link all these stores down below in the description for you if you want to um, have a look at their wares. But I really like this tray. It has a little spout that is hidden in the tray. So you pull the tab and it opens the door. And I just think that's brilliant. Now, I am using my Diamond Pen Pal Roll Stop Pen. This is the special one that came out for another Margaret Morales kit from Diamond Art Club. And I'm using a 10 placer from Diamond Art Club there uh, in the pen. That was probably a mistake. As you could see, this section has one majority color and it's, it's interesting. I am using um, Abby's, Abby's Diamond Art. I'm sorry, I've forgotten the name of it already as I'm recording this. Um, can I see it? Yeah, Abby's Diamond. Um, the Jasmine, Sweet Jasmine that I unboxed a couple of weeks ago. 
I'm using that in the multiplacer and it is very sticky at the beginning and I accidentally put it down on my canvas and now I'm trying to pick it up. Um, just my, my suggestion is actually to kind of mess with the putty a little bit with your hands before you start diamond painting because it is really sticky and you could see that it was grabbing the drills really hard at the beginning. That is that is what I would recommend. And for the single placer, I am using Randa's Crafty Corner Putty. I love her putty. It's wonderful. Um, but because she's in the States, I don't have much of it. <laughs> anyway, how are y'all doing? It has been a couple weeks since I've made a dedicated whip and chat and... Really, there's no other way for me to say this other than I have felt weird about it. Lately, I've just been feeling kind of overwhelmed. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it um, when sharing things on my channel and especially things that are really personal. So I've had to take a little bit of a step back in that way and um, just, I guess, for my mental health. And truthfully, um, I know that a lot of it is probably in my head. Um, but I think there's something about being perceived by other people that weirds me out. So when I know that there's a lot of people watching, I feel like I have to watch what I'm saying. And even though, you know, most of it is totally harmless and everything, you know, it just... I'm worried that I'm going to say something that's going to upset someone that I know. So I've kind of taken a minute to, to let myself live a little bit to give you something to, t to hear, to, to listen to. Um, but there's nothing bad happening or anything like that. It's just been kind of a, a wild few months. Um, First of all, I'd like to tell you that I am going to be away for a couple of weeks because I am traveling. I am going with James to Canada and then the U.S. And that's going to be so much fun. Now, y'all, if you've been here for a while, you might know or remember that I went back to the States in at the end of September and early October. Um, and that was a trip so that I could go through my grandparents' belongings before, just so that we could, you know, process all of that stuff. And um, my dad wanted me to make sure that I could take whatever it is that I wanted to take. Um, it had been nine months since she passed away, and they were ready for a change. They were ready to, you know, move on a little bit. And so they wanted me to, to come and take a look at things. And I did, I took a couple of things that remind me of them and my grandparents, um, who sadly are, are gone. Um, I was able to see my mom and my, her father, my grandfather as well. Um, and I spent a good majority of the trip agonizing over what I was going to bring home and how. <laughs> but this time it'll be so much different. It'll be the first time since 2017 that I'm going to the U.S. and nothing bad is happening to send me there. That's huge. So first, um, I'm going to go to Toronto and we are leaving next Wednesday is when the trip officially begins. And I am so excited to just meet. I'm going to meet so many people um, and have a weekend of just crafting bliss. So the retreat that I'm going to is a cross stitch retreat, but they're crafter friendly. So, you know, you know me, I don't just diamond paint. I cross stitch, knit, crochet, 
I do, I do a lot of things. I like a lot of different crafts and, um, so do a lot of other people. I'm not the only one. If you haven't, if you didn't know, or you haven't seen, I do have a cross stitch podcast channel. It's called Floss Tube. It's a place where people talk about what they've been working on and they share their updates and things like that. And my channel is called Rachel Ray Fiber Arts. You're more than welcome to have a look. Um, I posted in my community tab when I have a new upload to share with you all. And I decided at the beginning of this year to separate my channels. Was it this year or last year? I think it was last year. It was last year. Sorry. The beginning of last year, I started the new channel and it's doing well. It's, it's wonderful. It's great to meet people who have a similar interest. I post there once every two weeks. So the friends that I've made in the cross stitch community and also some who are in the diamond painting community are going to this retreat and um, it's my first ever crafting retreat. So you can only imagine <laughs> I'm just over the moon. There's about 200 people that are going to be there and um, I don't know all of them, of course, um, but I do know quite a few and it's my face hurts already with all the smiling that I'm doing, thinking about this retreat. You'll have to forgive my dog. She's barking, so I'm going to pause and see what she needs. I guess she just wanted to, to get out of the front room, which is fine. So I have a lot of things that I'd like to, to do while I... I'm over there. Um, but the trip in Toronto is only going to last for a weekend. We are leaving on the Monday and uh, flying down to Virginia, where we'll be for two weeks. And so I know that there are a lot of you who might be in the surrounding area who have been asking me for a long time to do a meetup. Now I can't do a retreat. Okay. But um, if you are near Richmond, Virginia, and you would like to meet me uh, at a coffee shop, I do have a form that's in the description box of this video. You can have a look at it. Um, if you want to register your interest, I will email once I have a location and a date and a time for you. Um, I would like to meet with anybody who wants to meet. I know there's a few already who have already said that they're going to be there regardless, which is great. It's, um, it's going to be wonderful just to shake hands and take pictures and say hi and see you, you know, in the flesh, because <laughs> I'm really just a person at the end of the day. Um, but it would be a good opportunity just to, just to see you. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, please um, put your email down on the form. All you have to do is tick the little box that says, yes, I want to hear from you. <laughs> and once I have a more solid idea of what's going on, I will send out an email with a couple of days notice and um, hopefully we can see you. I know I can't accommodate to all schedules or anything like that. Unfortunately, the time that works for me may not work for you. And I do apologize if if it's not possible, but, uh, we'll do our best. Yeah. So that's something to look forward to as well. Um, but yeah, there, there's just so much when I get there. Like, um, I have a bunch of coworkers that I'm really, I've been close to for a long, long time. I used to work in, um, geek squad in Best Buy. Um, <laughs> that was a really long time ago, back in, back in the mid 2000s. Um, I fixed computers and I have been really far away from all of that for a long time, but it was, it was a very interesting time in my life and I made some really good friends. And they are planning to have a reunion party. And I'm hoping that 
I can meet them again because it's been far too long. I remember I left the U.S. to teach abroad. I went teaching in South Korea. I always wanted to go to Japan uh, when I was when I was in high school and uni. I guess I was a weeaboo. <laughs> You know, I just loved everything Japan. I tried to learn Japanese in my free time and everything. And I really wanted to work there and live there too. But once I had finished university, I realized that I just didn't have the qualifications to be a teacher there. So the next best thing was to get as close as possible uh, with zero teaching experience. And the only country I was interested in getting my experience from was South Korea, which is kind of ironic considering their history, but I digress. Uh, I, I moved there in 2010. And I remember coming back from my first year living abroad. Um, it had changed me so much as a person living in a different country that doesn't speak your language. Like, um, they do, some of them do, but not, you know, not everyone, obviously. That's why I had a job. Um, but the culture difference and having to become completely and solely dependent on myself for everything, um, without a safety net. It was, it was, it made me grow up. Yeah. And uh, I realized that I was definitely not grown up. I was only in my early 20s and uh, I had a lot to learn, but it felt huge. And I remember coming back and that first time that I went back to Virginia, it felt like nothing had changed in Virginia. And I felt like a totally different person. I haven't really thought about this in a really long time. And I know that I'm going on a tangent, but sure, whatever. You know, that's why we're here just to sit down and, and spend some time together, right? So I remember that feeling and I met up with them. I made sure that, you know, when I came back, um, I had a couple months, I think I had two, two months that time before I got another job in Korea and, and went back. Um, I remember feeling so alien and they taught me this when I, you know, when I was, I was in a training course to become a, um, a language teacher, English language, English as a second language, ESL is what it's called. Um, and when I was getting my, my certificate, they said that, you know, reverse culture shock can be just as debilitating as the culture shock of moving to a new country and having to learn everything new, you know, and having totally new experiences in places where you don't understand the language and you don't understand the culture, you might not understand the history and et cetera. You, you might even struggle with food. And um, when I tried to sit down with my friends and old co-workers and stuff, and I was trying to explain that I felt like a total, like a totally different human. Um, because of the experiences that I had had and what I'd gone through, it was, uh, it was life changing. And back then we were able to just kind of, you know, laugh it off and, and whatever. But then year after year, you know, I, I stayed for almost four years. I tell people I was there four years. It was about three and three quarters (laughs) with the math, but it was a long time. And, um, I remember kind of wondering to myself, you know, is it, is it possible that I might not 
move back to the U.S. Is that, am I able to even integrate back? And I have to tell you that that has been on my mind for many, 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 many years. I didn't feel a strong connection to the place that I grew up or my high school or my university. I did have a strong connection with people, certain people. I've always been a person that has few very close friends uh, and, and lots of acquaintances, lots of people that, you know, I love and adore and, and wish nothing but the best for. But mostly I just go back to the same handful of people um, every time I go home. And I call it home. I do call it home because it's where my heart is as well. Do you know, there will always be a part of me that thinks of that place as home. So it was really interesting. Fast forward, jeez, uh, six years. And I had decided that I was going to make Ireland my home. And it was a big decision. Uh, and it's still one that I haven't fully transitioned into because I'm still waiting for citizenship. And I'm still debating with things like, do I fully transition over? Um, I, st- I still have U.S. citizenship, obviously. Uh, and it does make things difficult as an expat. That's what they label us, by the way. Uh, even if even being uh, fully employed here, you know, and uh, having no connections or any property or anything. I don't own anything in the U.S. and I don't make them money. They still want mine. <laughs> and it's the most frustrating, uh, single most frustrating thing that I have to deal with on a personal level. Uh, because my entire life is pretty much separate. The only thing that I have there are my handful of people that I talk to, including my parents. So yeah, I don't know where I was going with that. But that that is something that I struggle with as someone who has lived abroad for 14 years. Wow. <laughs> 14 years. Amazing. Um it's been, it's been a journey. And so I suppose this could explain why I love, I I love Asian art. Um, I, I'm an appreciator of Asian art and this painting in particular is absolutely stunning to me. This, this painting actually, Luna, Luna wants to come in, but I don't know if I'll let her in. Um, we'll see if she barks at me. <laughs> um, this painting would work really well for an event that's happening right now that I want to bring to your attention, which is I have two friends here who are creators on YouTube, Tia and Lizzie. I'm going to make sure that I link them. And I'd love it if you would check them out. They're lovely, lovely people. I have met Lizzie in person uh, one time when we were in Toronto and she came to meet me and she gave me a gift. She gave me a diamond painting as a present. It was so sweet. Um, They are doing an event right now called Splish Splash Spring Bash. And Tia is an amazing human as well. And her live streams are so much fun, so entertaining. And I love them both. They're wonderful, wonderful people. I think you should go check out the event. If you're working on a springtime painting, you should definitely head over and take a look at them, but you should watch her channels anyway. They're great people. I know that this painting would work. I just know that I won't be able to finish it. (laughs) Okay. I shouldn't be, I shouldn't be so down on myself but honestly this painting is really big it's massive and as you could probably tell we're now what 25 minutes in my lines aren't straight and it bothers me I'm gonna try to let it go because 
as I preach, it's not always about the finish. But if I want if I wanted this to be perfect, I would have single placed it. But what I really wanted to do was sit down and enjoy my diamond painting. Um, And that is exactly what I was doing here. I filmed this on Sunday night. It was about 8 p.m. when I started. I think it finished at 9.30. And I enjoyed every second of working on this square. I will tell you that. I know it looks boring, but sitting in the quiet, and you could, you could, I hope you can hear the pops and things. I'll try to mix it so that you can hear me shaking the tray and laying the diamonds down. It was so relaxing. So I really feel like I'm going to do this in future as well, a voiceover on top of whatever I'm doing. Sometimes when I'm diamond painting, I lose my track of thought, my track of thought, my train of thought really easily. (laughs) Um, That's me in general anyway, but um, sometimes it can be hard to come up with things and also focus on diamond painting and also, you know, do all the things. So um, that's why I decided to just sit down and diamond paint and worry about the voiceover later. It is now Tuesday night. Mm -hmm. And I really want to make sure that this video is ready to go on Wednesday. With this painting, I should have mentioned, I'm using Elizabeth Ward containers, um, and there is a lot of static in these drills. So I am planning on going and getting some dryer sheets from the store and uh, trying to fix that up a bit because um, it's a lot of static. My current weather situation is that, well, the clouds don't know what they're doing. Either it's pouring rain or the sun is blaring. It's one or the other. And it's making laundry day really interesting. <laughs> Honestly, like I I put out the blankets or the towels or whatever it is that I'm washing because I like to air dry as much as possible. I put them out on the line and then I kid you not, two minutes later, it's just pouring. <laughs> Irish weather is uh, very moody, and for the last nine months, literally from July, it has been raining. And I think there was one sunny week in August, and that was it. So it's kind of been a little depressing, and I think that was one of the reasons why When I went back to the States um, to visit my dad in September, I came back here and I knew that I needed to do something. Well, I needed I needed a hobby (laughs) that was good for my health. I have struggled in the past. Excuse me. I have struggled with taking care of myself and prioritizing my health a lot because depression sucks and it makes you feel like you're not good enough or worthy or whatever. And, um, you know, having, having a couple of people pass away in my family all at once, it made me realize that the, the one person that I'm going to have for the rest of my life is me. If I get there, if I, (laughs) if I survive, Um, survival instinct kicked in a little bit, I think. And I realized that if I kept going the way I was going, that I would probably end up in a wheelchair. Um, I had had a couple accidents over the last two years, uh, during all of this, you know, traveling back and forth and getting here. And then, um, mainly it was my ankle, but it was also my back and things like that. And I did not feel my age. Uh, I, the last time that I hurt myself, uh, I mean, I was just walking, uh, was it, was the last time in our backyard? Cause I remember one time I stepped down and I don't make, mean to make anybody cringe or anything like that. I know it's hard to talk about injuries, but even just thinking about it makes me like, 
hold my breath and not want to like feel that pain ever again in my life. Um, I stepped down from my back door wrong. You know, there's a high step. Uh, and you got to step down from the house to the the backyard kind of patio, concrete, whatever. Um, and I landed wrong and I collapsed. Um, that was horrible. And I think the last time was actually, that was the time before. Time before that was in a park. Um, James and I were on a walk together with Luna and we had just finished walking down a hill. And I guess my ankle was sore or weak and not used to the strain and as soon as we walked onto the gravel entrance of the park I collapsed the last time this is all the same ankle by the way the last time I was walking home by myself and I just I guess the the side of the road the pavement was uneven or something and collapsed that time I had to walk the rest of the way on the ankle and let me tell you, <laughs> it was awful. It's like carrying your own cross, you know, uh, it hurt so bad. Um, and there was no one there to help. And it was, uh, James was away or asleep or something. I don't remember. I didn't call um, and I just hobbled all the way back and it was awful. So do not do that. Do not be me. But that was the last time. And I, from that point, I was just like, wow, I don't want to leave the house. <laughs> I mean, I don't like to leave the house anyway, but wow, that was awful. So fast forward, um, this would be so September. So this was probably about six months after my last just my ankle accident. And excuse me, I'm going to take a sip of water. Sorry. I go to the States and enjoyed my time there. It was, it was really nice. Um, got to meet up with some friends as well. And it was, it was a good trip. Um, difficult in a lot of ways, but it was good. And when I was on my way back, I had, eventually I, ha I had to, you know, pack up all the stuff and I had two full suitcases and a carry on with me years ago not a problem, not an issue. I probably could have carried more than two, um, especially in my Korea days, you know, um, I, I could probably have lifted five bags into a train, not an issue. But Rachel last year, September, um, just getting those suitcases from the airport bus onto the train. And then I had to change trains midway through it was embarrassing i couldn't uh these are you know the the normal allowance the normal weight allowance i think it's 50 pounds it's 25 kgs i was struggling with 25 kgs um and i had a little bit of a cry on the train because the person that helped me was visibly in their 80s, okay? It was a true gentleman, a really, really kind man that I'll never see again. If for some reason he watches my videos, thank you so much. That was very kind of you. I, he, he just swooped in. He swooped in and loaded up my stuff on the train. At the changeover... He came to find me, helped me off the train, saw that I was getting on the next train, put them on that one. We were going to the same destination, it turns out. And when we landed in Killarney, he took them off the train for one last time. And he said, I'm really sorry, I, I 
can't help you any further. This is my last stop. And I was like, yeah, well, me too. (laughs) Thanks. It is the end of the line. So (sighs) I didn't realize how bad it was and how much strength I had lost over the years, you know, and I'm sure that, you know, doing this hobby and uh, making videos and being on YouTube and everything does not help, right? So when I got home, I think it was a couple days later, and I called a local who does personal training at her own gym. And so <laughs> girl boss, and also, yay. Um, I wrote her an email and I agonized over sending that email. I had wanted to do this years ago. And um, she she just said, listen, you're making the first step. And that means that you need to change. All you need to do is try. And I did. And I feel so much better, y'all. I know that I probably sound like a broken record at this stage. You're probably tired of hearing me talk about fitness and whatever, but it's so important. And it's, it's only you will know when it's time for you to cha- make a change, especially like me. My change is really drastic. Um, I couldn't even manage 2000 steps a day before. Uh, that would be my most amount of steps in a day. I prioritized YouTube. I prioritized crafting, Twitch, you know, um, doing a lot of watching videos for for my own, you know, benefit. Um, I All I did was sit and craft and make videos. And that was it. I didn't, I barely walked the dog, right? I'd only take her out when it was sunny. I'd just let her run around the backyard and not even worry about it. And now, what is he doing? (laughs) He's digging around in the keys, I guess. Or is that the kitchen? I think he's making dinner and clattering. Anyway, um, that really distracted me. Sorry, hang on a second. (laughs) Turns out that he was putting away the dishes and the door was open. So (laughs) it has been a very difficult six months and I do often sugarcoat it because I want to inspire people. I hope, I hope that you can hear my story and say, you know, that sounds a lot like me and I'm scared and I need to make a change because no one is going to convince you to do it except you. Uh, Fitness influencers are not going to convince you to do it. You have to choose. Um, And this is something new. Um, I, so I have been going personal training for six months, for five months. I did not go to the gym outside of those training hours. So I was going once a week for five months. It's not a big deal. Um, I noticed a big change in those five months. In just five months of going once a week, I changed the way that I ate and I'm changing my relationship with food. I'm looking at it as fuel. And you know me. If you've been here for a while, you know how much I love food. I love to talk about food. I love dreaming about food. I I am motivated by food. Um, basically, I'm just my dog. But truthfully, that that was my love language, okay? I, I was using it to, to kind of mask my problems, 
Food would make me temporarily feel better. Food was one of the things that gave me dopamine. Food would would um, make things better for just, just 10 minutes, you know? And I had a really, really, really negative view of myself. I was in a place where I was thinking, well, I'm going to die anyway. So what's one more packet of ramen? And then that became, I really love eating this food. I might as well just buy a case of it because I love it and I'm going to eat it. So I might as well. That became, well, I could eat this every day because I love it so much and it's so easy. So I was at the stage where I, I'm not saying that it is totally bad. I'm not trying to demonize anyone or anything like that. I'm only talking about my experience. My experience was that it, I was struggling to take care of my health because I didn't care at all, not even an ounce about my health. I didn't care what happened to me. I literally had to be scared less <laughs> before I made any changes. And even then, you know, even today, I'm not perfect. I'm not. Uh, I like, I like to indulge. I eat chocolate. I, I have alcohol, you know, I'm, I'll, I'll have what I want to have and I make it work. That's the difference. I work really hard to be able to have the food that I want. Um, I make sure that I do that in moderation but y'all know I'm going on holidays. I'm going to, I'm going to be on vacation and I'm going to do what, you know, I'm going to enjoy myself. Not every day will I go bananas and eat all the stuff, but I'm not going to be sitting there and nitpicking myself on a vacation. And I already told my trainer that, you know, I'm not planning on tracking. Um, cause I do, I, I track calories because it is, it is the best way for me to hold myself accountable and know why my body makes the changes that it does might not be for everybody. And I'm going to tell you right now, it is the hardest thing that I do. It is my least favorite thing to do with weight loss. I hate it so much, but it's necessary for me. And I think it's necessary because once I realized what I needed to eat and exactly how those things fit together, kind of like a a puzzle. I was like, oh, right. Okay. Um, Now I can kind of see where I am during the day and I can, I can put the, put the app down, you know, Um, I have a, 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 a formula for how I do things now. And one of my friends really inspired me to make this happen. You know who you are, if you're watching this. Um, I watched them change their lifestyle, and it really inspired me. I thought, if this person can do it, I can do it. (laughs) And... One of the things that also helped me was knowing that um, people who are also like me, who are neurodivergent, have found ways to do this that makes it easier. Um, Because I find that I hate doing the same thing every day unless I love doing that thing. So I have had to play tricks with myself to make me motivated to stay on track. And I have to say that moving into the new house has been a huge, huge, huge motivator to get me to move and to exercise more and to not feel like I'm in Groundhog Day. 
um, we live in town now, which means that I have, I have options for which direction that I walk in. Whereas before, there was only one way. There was only one path. I could go straight and I could take a left or I could take a right, but I couldn't really choose anything else. There was no variety um, at all. And that made things difficult because I'm a very visual person. I like finding different things. And now I have so many different routes that I can take. I also got that treadmill. Um, You might remember me talking about it a long time ago. Before, Before I got leaned really heavy into the gym side of things, I got myself a treadmill and I started doing cozy cardio. Cozy cardio is where you just get on your treadmill at a normal walking speed. And I'm talking slow, okay? I am not a fast walker anymore. I was in high school. (laughs) I am not anymore. So just a regular pace, like five miles an hour, uh, four and a half miles an hour even, and putting on a TV show and watching an episode every day. That was brilliant. I absolutely love it. And I think that people who don't think like me might not understand why we need to be distracted from doing the thing that we're doing. (laughs) Um, I don't want to think about what I'm doing if it's something that I'd rather not be. So exercise is not something that comes natural to me at the, at this moment. Um, I do now, six months later, crave like lifting weights and stuff like that. I do crave it. Um, but it's not like cardio is the absolute worst. I hate it so much. (laughs) Oh, look, new angle. Um, I decided to change the angle because, and I will be using this angle from now on, by the way, it's, um, way clearer where I'm placing diamonds. I'm sorry. I didn't do that before, but I only have 10 minutes of me working on it from this angle. And as you can see that I'm using that single placer pen for these ABs. So nice. And Randa's putty for the ABs. Again, I pressed the, the tip of the pen a lot on my hand before I started the ABs because I didn't want it to grab too much. Um, so yeah, anyway, yeah. Um, so about two or three weeks ago, I started going to the gym on my own and I'm going to tell you something right now that was so hard. I had this fear And I, it's not rational. I have, I used to go to the gym like six days a week. (laughs) I was, I was, what do they call, do they still call people gym bunnies or gym rats or whatever? I was there all the time. It was my happy place for a while. And... I needed no motivation to go to the gym. I would just go and I loved it. That was back when I could run. (laughs) Um, And it was a really fun place and I liked it a lot. This gym is not the same as the gym that I went to in my very early 20s. Um, It's smaller and has less machines. And for some reason, it felt almost... What's the word? It felt just impervious. Like, I felt like I had to be in the cool kids club to be going there on my own. When in reality, all I really needed to do was to tie my shoes, go down there with my piece of paper, with my exercises on it, have my headphones on, and I could just ignore the world around me. That is what it really was. So a couple weeks ago, I did it. I ripped the band-aid, so to speak, and I went down there on my own. I kid you not, I was the only person in the gym. 
And I have been the only person in the gym a couple of times. Uh, last time that I went, though, um, there was another training session happening when I got there. And uh, my trainer was there and she was like, yeah, good job. You're here. Excellent. I'm so glad to see you. Uh, go you for prioritizing your health. You know, all the, all the good trainer things that, that, you know, you hope they would say. Um, and I left after them, you know, like I fit in my, my session and it wasn't painful. Well, it was afterwards, but that's another story. I'm still, still dealing with the rib pain. Um, and oh, I didn't tell you. So if you haven't been on Twitch, uh, that's where I go live on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I've talked about it over there, but I haven't updated you here. Um, I went to the doctor and they said that I tore my, there's a muscle that attaches your ribs to your spine or something. I don't know the, the ins and outs of it. He reckons that that's what I have. I still think that I have an infection in the cartilage between my ribs, but we will see. Um, he said that I need to take it easy and to not work out, but I can't not afford to not work out. <laughs> So I'm going to wait and when I'm on holidays, I'll have plenty of time to rest and not activate my rib muscles at all, <laughs> right? That's the plan anyway. Um, but, but the hotel in Toronto has a gym and a pool and you know I'm going to be there. So um, again, if you would like to meet up, please, please check out that form. Um, I'm thinking about the weekend around the 4th of May, but I also have another weekend free at the moment. Um, there's always weekdays as well. I'm very much free on a weekday. Um, so who knows? But uh, sign up if you would like to meet up. And please only sign up if you reasonably could get to Richmond. Um, if, if it's terribly far out of your way please don't please don't I eventually I will be going to a diamond painting retreat um someday when I have the money to I promise um but please do not be thinking that you need to drive 10 hours one way to come and meet me because I'm only going to be at the coffee shop for two hours so it's okay <laughs> It's going to be okay. Um, you, if, if you can't meet up and you do want to talk, um, you can always join me over on Patreon. I share weekly vlogs over there. I talk a lot more in depth about my personal life over there. I show you Ireland and the dog and my projects as I'm working on them. And I also live stream over there. So if you want a YouTube live that's more consistent, definitely come and um, join me over there. Oh yeah, that's right. We did a live whip and chat last week. I totally forgot about that. But I don't do lives on YouTube very much um, because it really just doesn't fit in everybody else's schedule. And I don't want to be on top of everybody else either. There are a lot of people that go live. Um, there are a lot of creators in the diamond painting community now. And honestly, it's not, you know, for me, it's not that deep and I'm not trying to, to record over everybody, but, um, if you, this one, yeah, do you want me to start it or do you want me to wait another Yeah, one? you can start it. Really? Yeah. It'll only be about 10 minutes or so. Okay. Dinner is almost ready. <laughs> so, um. Yeah, if you wanna if you wanna come over there and hang out, there are perks to to being over there. Um, and you know we can always hang out virtually. I am just a chick in a craft room, so please don't be expecting too much of me. <laughs> this is not a retreat. This is just a coffee, um, and no weirdos. Like I mean, I feel like I have to say that, but most of you are not weirdos. But like, honestly, if I get creep vibes from you, I will not, I will not hesitate to use my rights 
<laughs> Let's put it that way. <laughs> anyway, anyway. Um, I'm just, you know, it, it, it makes me feel weird putting myself out there because you just don't know. But I, but I, I trust that, uh, there won't be any strangeness, no high strangeness going on. Uh, so just go ahead and leave your email address and I will send out a, um, an email with more details closer to the time. Yeah, thanks so much for joining me today. I hope that you enjoyed this whip and chat and um, enjoy watching me dye and paint. I thank you so much for watching and keeping up with me and, you know, indulging me. And if you don't mind, definitely, you know, maybe look back on past videos. That would help me a lot uh, in the channel. So I would appreciate it. Um, if you have the time, if you feel like connecting more, if you feel like knowing more about my history and stuff like that, um, you can always feel free to watch those. I have read books in the past. I have completed diamond painting reviews. I have lots of reviews that are about to go up while I'm away. But thank you for spending your time with me. And I hope that I get to see you soon. And if I don't, I will see you virtually definitely. So everybody take care and stay safe out there. Happy diamond painting, happy crafting, and I'll see you all soon with my next video. Take care, everybody. Bye!